song is When We All Get to Heaven.
There we go. Try that now. I'm unmuted. I know uh, my wife uh, ran that, Lisa ran that yesterday, and she was very happy to be able to mute me whenever she wanted <laughs> or mute me. So, um, but welcome. It's good to see all of you uh, on this morning. Uh, glad that you are here. And for those of you who are uh, joining us uh, online, we are glad that you're a part of the worshiping family uh, as well today. I see a number of folks have, uh, have checked in, and so we are glad that you are here. So uh, the announcements for uh, our church life together are included in your order of worship. Um, probably the biggest thing for you to know um, is that I will be out of town this week. So leaving tomorrow morning, uh, I'll be back uh, sometime late Thursday night, but... Um, in the meantime, um, you know, call Mel. She's in charge anyway. So uh, we're glad to, glad to do that. Most of you have my, my cell number. You can get a hold of me anyway. Uh, reception in Grangeville is spotty, uh, but um, I will be available for you as you need. So uh, with that being said, uh, I invite all of you to stand and turn to one another and greet one another. And welcome one another to the to the worship.
we can get Jeff to sit down, we'll get going. <laughs> All right, our scripture lesson today uh, on this uh, day, which is traditionally in the church Trinity Sunday, uh, comes from the 16th chapter of John's Gospel. Hear now the Word of God. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth, for He will not speak on His own, but will speak whatever He hears, and He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify Me, because He will take what is Mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is Mine. For this reason I said that He will take what is Mine and declare it to you. Sends our reading of God's Word. May He add His blessings to our hearing and reading of that Word. Well, it was a world of many gods. As Abram set forth from Ur of the Chaldeans into an unknown future, he brought with him a new kind of faith. One God who could no more be carved into stone or cast in metal than the sun could be bottled up in an old mayonnaise jar. This was indeed in a world where deities of all types abounded in great mythical pantheons. Deities more often than not at odds with one another. One God, Abram declared, one God, Moses proclaimed. One God, Isaiah announced, who was holy, 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 beyond all human attempt to package or control. And then along came the Christians. Blessed be God, they said, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity. And you're going, what in the world are they talking about? Still a unity of being, but a trinity of persons? The concept was confusing, to say the least. For those who had dispensed already with multiple deities, who had fully embraced the notion of one God, they wanted to keep things plain. So why complicate things? And what does it mean anyway, the three in one? Now throughout the centuries, many scholars of the church have tried to explain this conundrum, the often unexplainable. It is like the sun, said one, which we experience as a ball of energy in the sky, but also beams of light that stream down upon us, and still again as the emanating heat that warns, warms us. And explanations like this made a kind of sense. Augustine of Hippo used what we would now call psychological categories to explain the Trinity in terms of memory, understanding, and will. And in our own time, trying to be sensitive to all of the male-dominated language in the church, we have chosen to speak in terms of the God who creates, the Father, the God who redeems, Jesus, and the God who sustains, the Holy Spirit. But there is another truth to be gained on this day, one that originates in the language that Jesus uses here in John's Gospel. Hear him again. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. For all that the Father has is mine. In another place in John's Gospel, we hear Jesus declare, Do you not know that the Father 
is in me and I am in the Father. And then still elsewhere he prays that his disciples may be one even as the Father and I are one. Now this is not the language of form and function. No, this is the language of relationship, the language of mutual devotion. It is love that cannot be self-contained. It overflows from parent to child to spirit and back again. The love of God, the love that is God, is like a divine dance, a dynamic and graceful and deeply intimate movement. Now in this movement, God, who is Yahweh, I am, is not alone. For the very essence of God is relationship. This is far different from those mythological deities of old who were always fighting with each other, who were always rivals and annoyances of one another. And it is even more remarkable than that this God, who in the dance really needs no other, did choose to create and redeem a people. Not just a people, but you and me and each and every individual that we encounter so that we might join in that divine dance. The invitations have been sent there are to be no mere spectators on this dance floor. No outcasts, no wallflowers, no outsiders. We are called by God to see ourselves as God sees each of us and discover then ourselves to be like the persons of the Trinity, truly beloved. The prophet Isaiah says it beautifully. He says, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. It is not an anonymous form letter that invites us to participate. Each of us is invited by name. Now, all of this might sound good, but what does it look like when it's actually lived out? Many uh, years ago, when I was uh, fresh out of seminary, my wife and I were attending a minister's and mates retreat on the coastal islands of Georgia, St. Simon's Island. And after an afternoon off of retreat stuff where we could just go out on the island and explore, we were returning to the retreat center when a car ran a red light and hit us head on. Now, as luck would have it, an ambulance was just driving back onto the island from, uh, the, from the mainland and came across the, the wreck, and we were transported then immediately to the hospital on the mainland. And there we were in the emergency room, surrounded with all kinds of beeping machines and all going on, and... Brunswick General Hospital is a desolate place to be when you are from out of town. We were alone. We were not there long, however, when a nurse came back and she said, there's a couple outside that want to come in and they say that they're your minister. Well, since we'd been in a minister's retreat, it could have been most anybody. So I said, yeah, they can come back. And it was the Associate Regional Minister of Georgia, Carol Avery, and her husband, Bill. And we began to share. And luckily, our injuries were not that great. A few minutes later, the nurse returned. And she said, you know, there's another man and his wife out there, and he says he's your minister. Yeah, he can come back. And it was Dave Alexander, our regional minister. So he came back and so there we were, uh, all of us uh, sharing there together. A short time later, the nurse returned, and she had this quizzical look on her face. She said, you know, there are, 
probably a dozen folks out there in the waiting room, and they all say that they're your minister. <laughs> I said, well, yeah, they are. And then she just kind of looked at me, and she said, who are you? Well, nobody really, at least not in the way that she was thinking. She's not a celebrity, and neither was Lisa. We weren't rich or famous or any of those things. But it occurred to me at that point that I wasn't nobody. I was chopped liver. No, I was beloved, God's beloved, part of the community, part of the dance. The Apostle Paul spoke of such care, such charity, as he paints it in 1 Corinthians 13. This charity is no mere handout that you give to an anonymous person on the street while taking extreme care not to make eye contact. No, the charity that Paul speaks of is that love that bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. It is love that, as Jesus said, we see in God's own self. Now, as I look around, not just the sanctuary, but our world, all too often I see people who desperately need to know what this is like to be a part of the community, a part of the dance, people who feel alone, cast out, not beloved. So on this Trinity Sunday, God gives us a priceless gift that we can share with all those whom we meet, although, who, although whose life baggage has become so full and so heavy that they have forgotten who they are and whose they are. We can dare to look them in the eye and quietly remind them that they don't have to bear the burdens of the entire world. There is one God, one God who is relationship, who is divine dance, who is love. And all of us, we are God's beloved. So anyone with an ear to hear, please let them hear. We go now into our time of, uh, of prayer. I uh, hope that you'll take a moment and look at those who are listed already on our prayer list. Um, if there is any that you would uh, like us to add uh, to that, uh, I invite you to take one of the uh, prayer request cards that are in the pew pockets there in front of you. Um, fill that out. Um, and uh, for those of you who are at home, uh, if there's someone you would like us to pray, would you go ahead and use the uh, Facebook app and send that to me, and I will get it that way as we sing together our prayer hymn, Trust and Obey.
always want to say thank you, Russ, and I know I <laughs> but thank you, Russ, if you're watching. So we have, uh, in addition to those who are listed in your order of worship, I uh, do want to um, share a couple of uh, requests uh, this morning. One is uh, for us to remember uh, in prayer uh, David Boatman. David is down uh, in Texas uh, where his daughter uh, was, was quite ill, and she passed away uh, Wednesday morning. Um, so David is down there. Uh, I believe the funeral was Tuesday. It will be Tuesday, right? Okay. Um, so we do want to keep um, David and uh, and Kim and, and the entire family in our prayers. Uh, also, uh, just to mention, uh, especially to folks who are, are tuning in, uh, many of the flowers that are shared with us this morning are from um, the memorial service for Betty Otis, uh, which we held uh, here yesterday. And finally, uh, a prayers for Mark Patterson, uh, who is dealing with health issues. Um, he will be returning to his home this week. So we hope that uh, that, that goes well. And uh, we do want to remember him as well. And you may know of others um, that we didn't share out loud, in which case I hope that you will keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Let us take a few moments in silence, and then we will pray together. Let us bow. draw near to us, gracious one, and remind us that there is no place so dark that you are not with us. The psalmist who said, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil, for you are with us. Help us to be aware of that, because sometimes we get so caught up in our own way, in our own challenges, in our own worries, we forget that we do not walk this way alone. Remind us also that you have given us the community. You have made us a part of the divine dance, that we are in relationship not only with you, with Jesus and the Spirit, but also all those who follow the way. What a help that can be for us, gracious God, that we have others that walk the way with us. If we are ill, there are those who can help. If we are despondent, there are those who can cheer us up. When we celebrate, we celebrate not alone, but with a great cloud of witnesses. And so, God, this day, we give you thanks that you have heard the concerns and the cares of our hearts, that they are already lifted up and sealed with you, but you also share with us one another that we can give thanks for lives well lived. We can give thanks for returning strength. We can give thanks for one another through our Lord Jesus Christ, the very one who taught us to pray. He said, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive others. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. 
Amen. And now we come to the table, the centerpiece of our worship together. Because as we gather around this table, we gather with that great cloud of witnesses. We gather with all of those who are part of the community, the body of Christ, here to remember what Christ has done for us and what we are called to do for one another. It is a table of love. It is a table of grace. It is a table of service. Meditate on these things as we share together our communion hymn today, Gift of Love. Let us pray. Ever-present God of love and compassion, we come to your table as we do every Lord's Day, not because we have to, but because you have invited us here. This sacred meal of bread and cup is the way we as your people come together to renew and refresh our relationship with you every week. We are truly grateful and thankful that, you have the, that we have the opportunity to do this and we ask that you bless this meal and all who come here today to share it. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, and you are welcome at the feast.
night in which Jesus was betrayed. When he gathered with the twelve, he first took the bread. And when he had given thanks for it, he broke it and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body. It is broken for you. Take it and eat. Then in the same way, he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave it to them, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for many the forgiveness of sin. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. For as often as we share this bread and share this cup, proclaim Christ, resurrected and coming again. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious God, we give you honor and praise. We thank you that you do so much for us, that you have called us your own. And because of the many blessings that you have given your people, we in turn return a portion of those to you. Please take these tithes and offerings grateful gifts from grateful hearts. Magnify them that they may be used for your kingdom's sake. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, if you are able, I invite you to stand as we close together with our closing blessing. And now, Holy One, send us out. Lead us to be salt in a world that has lost its flavor. Make us into your light for the dark place where we live. This is not easy work, but because we have met you here, we are more ready than we realize. Bless us to be a blessing to those we will meet this week. In the power of Jesus' name, we pray and seek to live. Amen. And our closing hymn today is Sanctuary. Our closing song is Sanctuary. children say amen. Have a good week, everyone.